Thank you for joining us at Cointelegraph. Can you do me a favor and just introduce yourself and your role real quick? Sure, so my name is Marcelo. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Mycenas. Mycenas is a platform that allows anyone to buy and sell shares in artworks. So it's a bit like a Nasdaq for paintings. Really? So the, your whole industry is, your whole reason for being here is how blockchain will disrupt the finance industry? Well, so we believe in positive disruption, so mm. we don't want to destroy the industry. Okay. Uh, we want to improve it, we want to bring positive change. And in, in our particular case, we, we want to open up a whole new asset class. So okay. we believe that fine art is a very attractive uh, way of protecting wealth over time. And, and wealthy families have used fine art for, to pass wealth uh, through generations, families to families. Okay. Uh, but the general population, uh, people like you and me, people who are coming to this event, mm -hmm. which by the way is wonderful, uh, they, they've been excluded from these uh, asset plans. So you're speaking about more touching the underserved, using your, your, your platform and blockchain to approach the underserved community. Absolutely. I mean, this is not about uh, social impact. We are not right. to that level, so I don't want to you know, pretend that we're helping uh, the right. unbanked because uh, right. we're not. But we are helping the, the professional people who maybe make a bit of money and they have a, a bit of extra money and they don't want to, they don't know what to invest it on. Okay. And maybe they can spend a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars in, in buying shares of a Picasso, Monet, and they can see trading and going up and down in price. How is that? actually going to affect the old guards and how they look at your offering as compared to what they were offering? Well, I think they, uh, they're not uh, yet uh, feeling threatened because mm. we're too small and the concept uh, may seem a bit far-fetched uh, for most of them. They're very conservative people who haven't really changed the way they, they conduct business for generations. Right. Uh, the main players in this space are the auction houses, mm. so the business increases. They run 80% of the, the volume of the industry mm -hmm. and, and they've been operating exactly on the same way of processing auctions for the last three centuries. Mm. So we're not talking a hugely about a hugely innovative industry. Mm. Um, and But we, we think that once we make a name for ourselves and we're seen as the kind of the new kid on the block, they will be more willing to maybe engage in conversations with us and we think that we can actually work with them, mm. we can help them bring innovation into their own, their own processes. How much of the market share do you think that your company will be able to grab from the old regime? Well, I'm going to just give you the, the typical 1% answer. <laughs> uh, if you can just take 1% of this uh, $3 trillion industry, you know, we'll ah. be over the moon. And then play with the math any way you want to from there. Exactly. Okay, it's fantastic. We all have, uh, well, not all of us, but there's a large percentage of us that feel we've been taken advantage of by the banking industry, the finance industry, if you will, that exorbitant fees have been applied where it shouldn't uh, apply. Will blockchain, the, the, the technologies you have behind your company, uh, be able to eliminate those challenges of what we hate to see from uh, the finance industry, which we call predatory practices? Yeah, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. Just last week, I had to send a 150 pound payment uh, to our um, London office right. and they had to pay 22% in fees including uh, FX fees oh. and cable charges and so on so I, I fully understand uh, based on my personal experience running my company mm -hmm. uh, what you're talking about and nope. I, I, I personally feel very excited about a future where blockchain can eliminate uh, these opportunities where uh, these players they just because they happen to sit between two uh, parties that need to send money across mm -hmm and they, they can afford the luxury of not being efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say they're necessarily deliberately deciding to rip people off. I okay. prefer to choose to think that they, they, due to the lack of market pressure, they, they, they are inefficient and they can afford to continue being inefficient and pass these inefficiencies back to us. That was the most optimistic <laughs> cover for big banks I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, I, I, um, I have uh, banking experience. Most of my friends uh, are um, in the banking industry. I don't want to upset them by uh, <laughs> saying outrageous uh, things about them. You know they're going to see this, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's uh, a lot of bad actors in in the banking industry. Yes. Uh, I mean, 
every time you, you open uh, the, the paper, you know, there's, there's news about uh, this bank getting fined in billions for not following uh, KYC practices for helping uh, right. uh, bad people, launder money and so on. So okay. clearly uh, there's something that's broken in the industry and it needs to be fixed. And coming back to your question about can blockchain actually fix this? Right. I think the answer is yes. Okay. Because blockchain is about transparency, blockchain is about a, d a democratization, mm -hmm. letting everyone see what's going on and participate in, in the operations without having to rely on someone allowing you to, to, to be part of that. So, so denying access. Well, we spoke about KYC, and for the viewers out there, KYC is know your customer. This is important information when you are under this heavily regulated industry by governments. So, as we know with cryptocurrency, that's not so regulated. Two questions. When the government steps in, how is that going to affect the folks that are in cryptocurrency right now and the regulations to how they activate and on the uh, exchanges and the fiat exchanges, etc. Yeah. I mean, I think regulation in itself uh, could bring positive change. Uh, in practice, we still haven't seen that right. because the uh, banks, which are probably the most heavily regulated uh, um, type of companies in this industry, they they have to allocate a significant percentage of their budget just to cover compliance costs. And, and who ends up paying for those costs? The users. So if you, I know, the short answer to your question is if the cryptocurrency space gets regulated, it's going to get very expensive for everyone and it's, it's going to be subjected to a lot of constraints and restrictions, mm -hmm. which I think is, is going to be very negative and destructive for, for the ecosystem. So I, I'm a strong advocate of self-regulation. Uh, so just regulate where you need to regulate, but don't try to step too much into every industry. What do you feel about these government-issued coins? You're talking about Russia, you're talking about China. These are heavily influential entities. How do you think that their presence in the cryptocurrency market will affect the others outside of that government-issued regula government coin? Well, I think it's, um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. Um, I don't have a, a strong view. I think uh, it, my gut feeling is that it feels misguided mm. to create a centralized cryptocurrency that's kind of I feels like a contradiction, right? Um, but I mean, I can see why governments would want to to sort of bring crypto into into money issuance because mm. it would give them more control. Uh, it would give them uh, more visibility as to who is transacting with the currency, the amounts, and so on. So I, I can understand the rationale behind it, but I don't think it's going to bring real solutions. Right. You you mentioned one of the main challenges. It's almost contradictory to what we're engaging with digital currency for. The anonymity, the ease of use, but the transparency of a secure transaction. And it seems as though the government wants to step in and regulate those sectors for their own benefit. Do you see it any other way besides them benefiting? It, does it really look like they're benefiting the consumer or is it benefiting the government when they step in regulating cryptocurrency? Well, I think, I mean, I'm going to use the example of Singapore. So Singapore is also looking into issuing the wrong national currency. And I think, I mean, I, I'm sort of very bullish in Singapore. I've been in this country for five years and I, I absolutely love the way uh, government approaches innovation and, and embraces entrepreneurs. And I, I believe that they, the way they see a centralized cryptocurrency is different from maybe uh, the way China and Russia uh, take it. Um, and the way I see maybe a, a crypto Singapore dollar would be as a replacement for a check. Oh. So uh, even though this country is hugely innovative and I think it has the highest percentage of cashless transactions in the world, mm -hmm. there's still millions of checks being issued and cashed every year. Absolutely. And that is very expensive. And if you can get rid of checks and replace them with a crypto check, if you will, I would be you know, very happy about that. And I think that is a potentially a positive way of rolling out a centrally issued and controlled cryptocurrency. We've had a lot of conversation about the finance industry. And there's two things I'd like to ask you. One, what is the most disruptive, innovative, disruptive positive, innovative company that you've seen that you show so far in the finance world? 
right, besides, so your, besides your company? Quite a few companies that I've, I've come across for the first time in this event, which is kind of kudos to the organizers in, in, in bringing such a, a wide range of companies. Um, um, I can't remember the name of the company, so it's going to be unfair to them, but it's uh, a small startup that's uh, trying to create a digital bank okay. uh, based on cryptocurrency. Out of London. Out of London. Uh, they actually, I think, based in, in the Valley, in the US. Oh, super. Um, and they, they come into Singapore to, to mingle and connect with the local startups and learn from them. So I really like the approach that they have. And if, if you can really build a strong foundation uh, and create a 100% crypto bank mm -hmm. uh, that focuses on transparency, on access, and on, on democratizing services. I think that we're looking at potentially maybe a five to ten year uh, journey that, that could bring significant positive income to, uh, impact to, to the entire community. Superb. I appreciate you taking the time with us. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of the show. We'll see you tomorrow. See you Stephen tomorrow. Chase signing off for Cointelegraph.